Section 7.5 is estimating a population standard deviation. So ultimately, remember that means we're just making confidence intervals. And when you make a confidence interval, it's always for a population parameter. So for us, it'll be standard deviation. Don't forget, though, that variance is the square of standard deviation. Right? If you take a standard deviation and you square it, then you end up producing the variance, which you could make a confidence interval for a variance, but we're just going to be focused on standard deviation. The reason we do this is sometimes knowing an average, a mean, is not enough. So imagine that we have some sort of soda machine and it averages 12 ounces per can, which is what we want the machine to do. So it feels like the machine is working, but if there was a two ounce standard deviation on this machine, then a bunch of cans would be underfilled and then a handful would be overfilled and sticky, I don't know. But just knowing an average mean doesn't really mean everything is working the way it should be. Don't forget, whenever we study standard deviation, we always need to be sure that the population we're studying is normally distributed. So to make confidence intervals for a standard deviation, we have to work with a new table, which is called the chi-squared table. Maybe you've heard of the name chi, K-A-I. It's kind of how it sounds like. It's the Greek uppercase letter for C, chi. Um, so this table also works with degrees of freedom, and they are N minus 1 for this table. But what's different about the chi-squared table or distribution is it is not symmetric. As a matter of fact, this distribution is actually skewed, which specifically it's right skewed. As the degrees of freedom increase, meaning we have a much larger sample size, the curve starts to flatten out and it looks more symmetrical, and you'll see that in a picture in a minute, similar to the T table, is there's a different table for every single degree of freedom. So instead of having 100 plus tables to flip through, we just have one table that picked some important values, and that's what we'll look at. And just like before, it kind of gives us all the degrees of freedom up to 30, and then anything bigger than 30, we just look at whichever is closest. And if it's a tie, you're better off going with the larger number. Now here's what's new. We just said the distribution is not symmetrical bell-shaped, and therefore it is not centered over zero like the Z in the T tables, right? The standard normal table is centered over zero. As a matter of fact, this table starts at zero on the far left. So if we think of a number line starting at zero and then moving to the right, this means that all of the critical values are going to be positive, greater than or equal to zero. I mean, I guess technically they could be zero because it starts there, but they'll all be positive numbers. But this also means that we cannot use symmetry to find our critical values. We're going to have to get both of our critical values individually. We'll refer to one as chi-squared left, so we'll use a subscript of L to let us know which critical value it is, and chi-squared right with a subscript of R to indicate that one. You know, So like on the Z, we did Z alpha over 2, T alpha over 2. We'll still be doing alpha over 2, but we'll be writing left or right. And this table measures area to the right. So the T table measured area to the right of a T score and the Z table measured area to the left of a Z score. So chi squared is more like T that we're measuring area to the right of a, in this case, chi squared score or critical value specifically. But even though we have this right skewed shape, it still turns out that the total area under the curve is one or a hundred percent. And so here's an example of two of those chi-squared distributions we were talking about. So when my sample size is 11, my degrees of freedom is 10, and I have this super steep and then off to the side 
right skewed curve, but as my sample size increases up to 21, so I have a degrees of freedom of 20, the curve's still slightly right skewed, but it's starting to flatten out and look a little bit symmetrical. Notice our chi-squared scores down at the bottom that, you know, on the left we might have a chi-squared score like 5, but on the right you could have huge numbers such as 35, and you'll see that as we find chi-squared values.